Hello everyone, welcome to another of our fly tying series videos. Uh, the particular fly that uh, I'm going to show you guys how to tie right here is a uh, green drake uh, dun pattern. Uh, it's a fantastic pattern, uh, floats well, good visibility, um, and most people don't seem to get in on that hatch, but if you happen to be on the river on uh, one of the days on those uh, green drakes are coming off. Uh, it can be a pretty fantastic bit of fishing. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how this is tied. Okay guys, we're going to get started here. So um, I've taken my olive thread, started behind the eye of the hook, and went all the way back to uh, where the hook starts to bend down. First material I'm going to tie in here is a couple of, just a couple of pieces, two pieces of uh, red flash boo. This is just going to be a little tag. So, clip off the ex excess here. Doesn't have to, you're not using a lot of this, you're just taking a couple of three, four wraps up the body with this. Just gonna make this fly stand out a bit, so. So this fly has quite a few, few step to, steps to it, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a beginner fly, but it certainly is not a hard fly, fly to tie. Okay, so the uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, grab a couple of fibers off of a pheasant tail here. We want to try to keep these as even as possible. and Three to four is kind of the number we're shooting for here. So we'll go ahead and tie those in. If you ever look at a green drake, the tail on it is pretty long, so you want to have a pretty good length, lengthy tail on it, probably half an inch or so. Go ahead and just wrap, wrap this down. We're not actually going to wrap the body, just going to get it tied in there securely. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in a, just a little piece of copper wire <clears throat> and a little piece of flash. You can tie these in separately or you can tie them in together, whatever, whatever works for you and whatever is easy for you. So. I think it's important as you make sure that stop right at where you tied it ended your fibers at you want to cover this up good so this wire doesn't show through the body of your fly so I'm gonna go ahead and put it about here so we're gonna take and separate these two out we're gonna go up. We're gonna go up the body with our our pearl flash boo first. Um, Any time that you're segmenting bodies, you want to try to keep your segmentation uh, as even as possible. I'm going about a sixteenth of an inch in between. Try to keep everything nice and clean, even. Capture this in here good. Go ahead and cut the excess off. So now we're going to counter wrap with the wire. Same thing. Try to kind of keep even, even segments. And this is going to kind of keep that uh, little bit of crystal flash from getting torn up when you catch fish on this fly. So it adds a little more enhancement to the segmentation and durability at the same time. So. Kind of getting a bonus out of this materials here. Clip off your excess. <clears throat> okay, so now you can kind of see we got this nice long tail here. We got the tag. We've wrapped the body. So the next step is we're going to take a piece of two mil olive foam. I've already pre-cut a little wedge into it here. Just a personal preference. I don't really like anything square on a fly, so. Go ahead and kind of get this secured down in here good. 
I'm going to stop right behind the eye and just kind of slowly work this into the into the fly here and get it tied in good so that basically this under wing here you're looking at about well, uh, eighth to a quarter of an inch it's kind of what you're shooting for so you can leave this or trim it off whatever you want to do I always leave it about an eighth of an inch so it's kind of out of the way at least now okay so the next thing we're going to do here is take a piece of the cylinder foam and same thing I've cut a taper into this it makes it a little bit easier to tie down with these bigger ones because this is a fairly good size fly so we want to make sure that we get it tied in there good it kind of helps with the taper take some good wraps around both sides of this thing and get it get it where it needs to be Get a little pull, make sure it ain't going anywhere. So you want to try to come around the back side and just get this to where it's basically, you know, propped up straight up and down vertically so it's it's good. And you could take and cut, pre-cut this. <clears throat> just leave it kind of long because you may have to trim a little off. So we're, we're there. We're going to take about a half a dozen to eight pieces of... Uh, crystal flash here I'm not folding this over I'm just going to straight tie it in you want this to lay down the center of the underwing here I'm going to clip this off right even with the bend of the hook in the back here <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do I'm going to take roughly about half of a pencil with the natural deer hair pull all the guard hair out of it with my comb <clears throat> go ahead and stack it So we want this deer hair just a little bit longer than the crystal flash on the underneath and we're just going to kind of work this in behind our post here secure it in there good so now we got a pretty good wing come in here and trim all these butts out You want to get in as close as you can it don't have to be perfect you're gonna cover all this up here in a second with some dubbing anyway so but get it get it down as close as you can okay so got everything where we need it <clears throat> excuse me So I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I'll tie these with gray foam uh, for the underwing and that that body part. Whatever I do, I always alternate the the uh, color. If I use green or olive foam, I'll you know tie a use gray in the front half, just give it a little bit of contrast. And if I use gray foam, then uh, use the green dubbing. You want this pretty pretty sparse on the dub and you can always add more it's easier to add than take it off so what we're trying to do is cover up all the deer hair and the thread let's take and flip this up look at the underside still got a little bit of thread shown there
Okay, so the underside's good. We'll come back to the top side of the fly here, just where this dubbing is meeting the post. I'm going to go around here, make about eight or ten wraps. What that's going to do is it's going to give me a spot to tie in uh, my hackle feather. So this is roughly like a size eight or ten. Uh, as far as the hackle goes, kind of a bigger hackle. So, if you want to try to, you know, match your hackle so it, it's consistent with the size of the fly you're tying. All right. So we're gonna go around. The post about oh six seven times just want it kind of a nice <clears throat> nice bunch of hackle there and then we're gonna capture this feather in that little slot we made so you want to kind of be careful when you're doing this so you don't trap your hackle in in your thread wrap so cut the excess off and then we're gonna actually whip finish this on the post itself so I always usually leave mine just a little bit long that way. It makes it a little bit easier. You gotta kind of be careful when you're whip finishing here to try to just get it down there where it needs to be and not get your hackle in there at the same time. Just kind of go through and make sure I got my thread down there good. Cut off my thread. And I'll just kind of go through here and <clears throat> make sure I don't have any errant hairs. Kind of clean everything up real nice and then take my scissors and cut this post down just a touch more. Then on this piece of foam here, just taking cut the corners on it so it's not flat all right there you have it green drake